So this first piece is by Dave Gallagher. Dave produces great work. This picture, which features demons, was used on the cover of issue 106 of White Dwarf magazine, and I don't think I've seen it used anywhere else, but it is possible. Let us know if you know. Now the main focus of the piece appears to be the Great Unclean One, the greater demon of Nurgle. The big green blobby thing in the chair that looks a bit like Slimer from Ghostbusters. Now, for some reason, he's fondling his own breasts. Maybe he has an itch. He is carrying a few infections, so that might explain it. He is also sitting on a very interesting chair. A throne, if you will. It's probably not the golden throne. Let's not get those two mixed up. The way it's been painted looks a bit Geiger-esque, and a lot of chaos-themed art and miniatures at the time did. The bird heads on the top seem to have a bit of a Zinchian vibe, so maybe he stole a throne from a Lord of Change. On the left of the piece, at the front, there's a Chaos Space Marine. They then went by the name of Renegades too, which is brilliant. My cousin had a ZX Spectrum game called Renegade, and I think that was more of a Double Dragon ripoff. I love the armour style of the Marine, it's very textured. The shoulder pads are a bit like nuts, or maybe even turtle or snail shells. Very organic and weird. It's lovely. The yellow or gold Chaos Warrior on the right hand side is carrying an axe. Now this axe is interesting because it appears to have a face. Maybe its spirit was once a football hooligan who enjoyed headbutting people or glassing them. Faces on weapons is awesome and I always enjoy it when I see it. My name's Marcel and this is Snakeworks. I know that you're all big fans of Warhammer 40,000 themed artwork, and I know this because you all watch some of the videos that feature it. However, I don't blame you as a lot of it is very interesting indeed. So in today's gallery, we have some rather choice pieces featuring Space Marines, Titans, demons, and fan favourites, Harlequins. Let's jump in. It's Titan time. Who isn't a big fan of Titans? Big, walking, beastly behemoths. Now sadly, I don't know who drew this one, but it appears to depict what is known as a Reaver Titan. But you knew that, right? Reaver Titans have always been one of my favourite types of Titan, as I believe they might have been the first Titan I was exposed to, as it were. I remember seeing them in an old issue of White Dwarf magazine. Now the Reaver is known, I think, for having two different head options. There is the standard wide flat head, or the long-nosed doggy style, which I think is the version I prefer. Now combine that head with the warp missile, and that's the best titan ever. Our Reaver titan here is armed with what I believe to be a power fist or power glove, depending on the age, and a volcano cannon, I think. I'm not an expert of titan weaponry, so if you can confirm or refute that, please let us know in the comments below. It's been a while since I played Epic. Maybe that was the mid-90s? That's a long time ago, isn't it? Now amusingly, the Titan appears to be wearing, yes wearing, the biggest purity seal ever. Look how big that is. Even these sheets of paper would be like huge ship sails. It's pretty incredible. Before, I would have found it absurd, but now I find it kind of fun and charming, you know? I wonder if the script is standard size, or if they use a really big font to fill it up. I need to know. Now the top of the Reaver usually carries another weapon, the carapace weapon, however this one does not, just has a row of spikes like the Warhound. I have a feeling in the early Adeptus Titanicus days you could have multiple variants of the same Titan, so it might be one of those. Does anyone know? So what I seem to remember from the old versions of Adeptus Titanicus locked away in the depths my script just fell down. 
locked away in the depths of my memories somewhere. There were loads of different subtypes of titans with a lot of very different names, of which I can't really remember. I think there was maybe a Night Gaunt, a Vandal perhaps, and also a Nemesis Titan maybe? I have a feeling there were absolutely loads of them, and I'm sure some of you out there will remember every single one of them and let us know in the comments below. Now, do those sub-variants of Titans still exist today in the lore, or have they all been retconned out and away somewhere? So, it's some Harlequins up next, and I think this piece is by Jez Goodwin, the Eldar Maestro. Or should we call them Eldari? I'm a big fan of the Rogue Trader era Harlequins. Now our main Harlequin standing front, not quite centre, is brandishing a lovely sword. He appears to be very proud of it, and who can blame him? It appears to be very well made and has a little logo painted on the side. The sword might also be a type of chain sword as it has a serrated edge, but that might just be the type of the blade. Do any Eldar experts want to chime in on that? The Harlequin in the very centre is up to something strange. He's either attempting to hide his power fist from us, in which case they're doing a bad job, or protecting their crotch from the guys on the right of the picture. They're all aiming in that general direction. Nobody wants their crotch shot off. Ouch. At the rear of the picture is a Dreadnought or a Wraith Lord whatever name you prefer. The way it's standing watching over the Harlequins gives me some sort of proud chicken mother vibes. Watching the children play as it were. Also it has a fantastic pair of speedos on and what appear to be wings? Or is that a pair of banners? Hmm. Now every single Harlequin in the piece is pulling what we might call a power pose. It looks like something from an episode of Power Rangers. Not that I'm a Power Rangers expert. I was too old for it when it came out and missed it by a couple of years. I did hear good things about it though. Now if there's one thing I take away from this piece, it's just how interesting Harlequins can be. They're all so very different from one another and yet so very cohesive at the same time. They seem to break a lot of rules and get away with it. Brilliant stuff. I have some very, very important questions for you. Question number one. Do you prefer the term Eldar or Eldari? Oh, by the way, you can put your answers in the comments below. We all look forward to reading those. Anyway, question number two. Do you think the well-known Eldar Walker should be known as a Dreadnought or a Wraith Lord? This is supposed to be them walking past, by the way. Dreadnought or Wraith Lord, which is the better term? Again, answers in the comments below. So this is a Space Marine. A very popular art choice. And sadly I don't know who the artist is of this piece. To be fair, this is a tiny little picture. And you might even say it's more of an icon than a piece of art. But I feel it's interesting, so we have to include it. It's the same sort of size as the example marines on the side of the RTB-01 Plastic Space Marine box set. Now, as the picture is black and white and low detail as it were, we sadly can't tell which legion or chapter the marine represents. Maybe the tabard gives us a clue, so I think a few chapters might wear those. Even though it looks to be a dark angel maybe, it could perhaps also be a librarian from a different chapter or legion. The marine's head is quite large, giving him a childish appearance. That's more of a sign of the times though, nowadays your artwork is a little more in realistic scale. I do find it charming, and I also never really noticed it as a youngster. Does it bother any of you? When it comes to the marine's right hand, the hand not holding the bolter, we can see there are no individual fingers. It has the look of perhaps a mitten or a flipper. Mittens are things that little children wear in the snow, especially on TV and movies, but I think when I was a kid, we just wore gloves. Are mittens even a thing anymore? Now, the way this Space Marine has been drawn 
looks like the little example Space Marines on the side of the old RTB01 plastic Space Marines box. The one I remember most was the little Rainbow Warriors piece of art. I distinctly remember picking it up in the shop and having a look at it, and then never seeing them again for years and years and years. It got to a point where I wondered if I'd actually imagined them. I have that box somewhere. And really, we should probably dig it out and have a look at that Rainbow Warriors piece. But not today. We'll leave that unboxing for another day. Maybe we'll use those for the Golden Demon 2024 project. Okay, it's another Titan. And again, by an artist I can't identify. If you know, then please, please let us know in the comments below. So I believe this Titan to be another Reaver Titan. Sometimes it can be hard to identify them, as the old art was very fluid in its portrayals, and I think they were not fully settled on their designs yet, especially in the art phase. Our Reaver Titan is armed with a Chain Fist, which, while being an awesome weapon, isn't as awesome as the Power Fist. I think they look a bit weird on Titans. The other weapon, the ranged weapon, appears to be a giant melter cannon, or maybe an inferno weapon of sorts. It's definitely giving me heat weapon vibes regardless. On the end of the barrel is a massive crosshairs that look fantastic. You don't see those anymore on Titans, and I feel we need to. Much like our last Reaver Titan, again we don't have a weapon on the top of the carapace. We do, however, have this spiky contraption instead. I wonder what that is. When I saw them as a youngster, I thought they were banner poles, but as it has no banner, now I'm not so sure. Does anybody know? What is brilliant about this Titan is the trim. Normally, you just get your pointy arrow style, but this time it's an awesome jagged lightning bolt type effect. Looks really nice, and I have to say I wish we saw it on Titan Miniatures now. So I always had a soft pot. Soft pot, yes, I have had a few soft pots over the years. I've always had a soft spot for the long, dog-headed Reaver Titan. I think the driving force behind that old nostalgic feeling was when I saw it in the Assault on Barbarous epic battle report from an issue of White Dwarf 300 years ago. I think it was the... Imperial Guard versus the Eldar. Anyway, in their epic force in the battle report featured that dog-headed Reaver Titan, and he also was equipped with an awesome Vortex missile on the top. Does this look like a Vortex missile? It looks more like a helicopter. Anyway, I thought that was the greatest miniature I have ever seen, and I've always wanted one since. Now, that army also featured my favourite tank miniature ever, the Stormhammer with the double turrets. Not one, but two. And it also had four little teeny tiny turrets on the sides. I think they're called Sponsons. Well, they're actually above the Sponsons. What are those ones called? They're like little battlement guns. They were brilliant. Anyway, the old Stormhammer was absolutely incredible. Not so much the newer one, it doesn't have the same sort of cool multi-turreted look. The front one is very static from what I remember. Static. Some more Harlequins here for your viewing pleasure. This is a brilliant piece, and sadly I don't know who the artist is. So again, if you know, please let us all know in the comments below. Now firstly, we have to address the elephant in the room, the cheeky elephant. The first time I saw this art, I never actually noticed it, but it was posted on my Instagram and everybody pointed it out. A big old bum, very cheeky. It reminds me of mine. Would you like a look? Maybe later. Now the colors used on this piece are incredible. You always have to have a lot of color with Harlequins, but somehow this one just seems so much better it's very punchy and very poppy. I really like it. Now, cast your eyes over to the Death Jester, the black suit wearing chap. Have a look at his mask. That doesn't look very Eldar to me. It looks more like an orc face. Does that mean anything? Does anyone care? Who knows? I still think it looks like an orc though. Now, the Harlequin with the yellow mask and the giant crotch gem has an interesting weapon. One of those crystal pistols you see dotted around in the fluff. 
Has one of those ever made it into miniature form? I can't say I ever recall seeing one, but I did see this pistol in the art a lot, especially the older stuff. His other weapon is a Harlequin's Kiss, probably the best weapon in all of Warhammer 40,000, apart from maybe the conversion beamer. This is one of those pieces that inspire you, and it certainly inspires me. I have an old box of Harlequins that need painting, and so maybe this art is the shot in the arm my mojo needs to paint them, although I do have a lot of other stuff to finish first. Now there was always something about Harlequins that screamed to me, EXPERT, Expert PAINTERS ONLY. And that always put me off. Now I feel that's a wall we're going to have to attack later this year, or maybe next year, we're a bit busy this year. We still haven't even moved into the new studio, we're still in here with Mr. Ikea plant. Anyway, I do have that old, old hammer Harlequins box set somewhere. It came with about 17 metal Harlequins. And I think that's as good a place as any to start painting Harlequins. What do you guys think of painting Harlequins? Are they expert painters only? Or can anyone have a go? I mean, to be fair, anyone can have a go. Here, we have some Rogue Trader era Space Marine combat. Doesn't it look great? This one is by Stephen Tappin, and sadly we don't see much of his work. So the piece portrays space marines against an unseen foe. I'm going to assume it's orcs, judging by the grizzly orc head trophy on the post. Poor old orc. I really enjoy these old sketchy black and white styles of art. It really suits the old hammer space marine aesthetic for the time. A little rough around the edges, but it captures all the energy from the setting. It's brilliant. If I can divert your attention to the marine's helmet, you will see some interesting details. Firstly, there's a bird on there, which I think might be a dove. A peace dove, which I suppose is a bit of 80s irony for you. Didn't that peacemaker character use a dove? I wonder which came first. Now the second detail is a little more interesting. That appears to be Mickey Mouse on his ears, which would imply Mickey Mouse and or Disney is still a thing in the 41st millennium. A little worrying. It could perhaps be the mouse from Itchy and Scratchy. Was it Itchy or Scratchy? I've not seen The Simpsons in years either. The Marine also has a modern day screwdriver taped to his shoulder pad. I wonder if that's an antique from our era, or if they still make them like that in the grim darkness of the far future. What do you reckon, guys? Now, can you imagine if Disney was in the 40k universe? I wonder what form it would take. Do you think Disney would still be family friendly in Warhammer 40,000? Or the universe of Warhammer 40,000, I should say? Or would they have put a nice grim dark spin on things? bit like my chair. I can't really spin because there's about 6,000 things that'll get knocked over and break on the floor. I'm surprised no one's done a sort of 40k Disney crossover yet. Not cross- this is X Factor, isn't it? A crossover. Sleeping Beauty Adeptus Sororitas. Disney Princess Sisters of Battle. I'm surprised that hasn't been done. And the Seven Leagues of Votan Dwarfs. Brilliant stuff. It's time for some more Titanicus, and I know you guys are big fans of that. I know I am. I've just ordered a mint in box Bainlord Titan from eBay. I wonder when that will turn up. Anyway, the art. I do apologise, but again, I don't know who the artist is. You know the drill. If you know, then please let us all know. So this time, our Titan is 100% a Warlord Titan. I know this because I had the plastic version as a child that came in the Space Marine boxed set. And what a set that was. So many brilliant things. Land Raiders, Rhinos, Marines, Orcs, Battle Wagons, Eldar and Grav Tanks. It was one hell of a set. Interestingly, in this piece of art, we are looking at a cutaway. But you knew that as you're looking at the same thing as me. Well, hopefully anyway. This warlord is what we call a beetle back titan, as he has a back carapace that looks a bit like a beetle, I guess. It's the sort of curved shell look. Maybe a turtle shell would make more sense. I want to see four warlord titans painted as ninja turtles. Now, weaponry. What do we have here? 
It looks to be armed with a volcano cannon, an apocalypse missile launcher, a turbo laser destructor maybe, and an unknown weapon on the top. Can anyone help identify that one please? I'm at a loss. Now back in the day, you could get a box of six of these. I think it was called Battle Titans, and I dread to think how much one of those would cost you on eBay these days. I don't even dare look. Now I have a bone to pick with the plastic warlord titan from back in the day and stop beeping your horn outside my house, scum. I'm not going to be naked up the window for you again. Now, when I was with some, hmm. Now, when I was a lad, I really wanted the Space Marine Epic Boxed game, and it had a single Warlord Titan in it. On the box, the Titan had some awesome weapons, such as a missile on the top, I think, and a power fist. Hold on, I've got an idea. I've got it over here. <laughs> Look at this. Can you see that? Look, it's got a massive missile launcher, a minigun thing, an assault cannon of sorts, and a power fist. Looks bloody good, doesn't it? Anyway, when I opened the box, I noticed that my Warlord Totem... Totem? Totem Pole? My Warlord Totem Pole? No, my Warlord Titan didn't have any of those weapons. It had a sprue of crap weapons, which didn't look anything like those ones, and they all looked a bit rubbish. But one of them looked a bit like a thermos flask, and the other one was like a light bulb. When I was young, I was very disappointed with that and wondered just what the hell was going on. So I want to know, did they put random weapon sprues in that boxed set? Or was it a lie and they gave everyone the crap weapons sprue? Did any of you have Space Marine? Which weapons did you get for your Warlord Titan? So we have a bit of a famous subject up next. A Harlequin Land Raider. This time by Jez Goodwin. Now some of you newer fans might not be aware that Harlequins used to be able to use Land Raiders. I think in the lore they stole them and if you wanted to use it in game it had to be painted appropriately. I bet they looked good on the table. Sadly, I think I only ever saw one, and that was in Golden Demon. The Harlequin in the picture seems very excited about having a Land Raider on his team. He's really throwing his arms up. Surprise, motherfuckers! We got a Land Raider! Now, what I love about this Land Raider in particular are all those banners, and even the bunting. Bunting! On a Land Raider! I bet you didn't ever expect to see that. I think it's only ever 80s Harlequins that use bunting thinking about it. Let's bring it back. The Harlequin Land Raider must be one of the rarest vehicles in all of Warhammer 40,000. The coat pales in comparison. Coat. Hold on a minute. Coat. No, it's Zoat. My autocorrect is playing up again. Damn you, script. So anyway, did you ever see a Harlequin Land Raider in the flesh? If so, do you have some pictures of it? Let me tap my hat there. We need to see them if you do. I mean, the original Land Raider box doesn't show any Harlequin Land Raiders on there anyway, but it does, however, show this Imperial Guard one here. And it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Michael. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below, or up here somewhere. Okay, so it's another piece by Stephen Tappin, and again we are in a Space Marine themed battle scene. The Marines, again, are battling unseen opponents. I like that, as it adds some mystery to the piece. There's a dead head in the bottom corner, and I think that's an orc, but it looks a bit like Gollum to me. Oh, my precious. Now, when it comes to identifying the marine chapter, or legion, we have some clues. The banner and one of the shoulder pads looks like it has the old Dark Angel's winged sword, but it's a little different to usual. Also, the marine standing the tallest on there has a very different logo. It looks a bit like the mask from Crash Bandicoot. But I'm going to go with Dark Angels though. I think it makes sense. A lot of people reckon that the marine helmet that has a rhino horn is pretty cool, and I don't think I've ever seen that done anywhere else outside this picture. That's something we need to address and kitbash our own version ASAP. And when I say ASAP, 
It means maybe one day, as I will more than likely forget. It reminds me of Rocksteady or Bebop from the Ninja Turtles cartoon. I can never tell which one was which. Hey, is that two Ninja Turtles references in the same video? Whoa! The Marine at the front also has an interesting headpiece. He has a sort of Vietnam helicopter style shark mouth on him, and I think that used to be seen a lot more back in the day on Marines. Again, I feel we need to revisit that and do it ourselves. I shall add that to the list too. I really like the bolter the shark faced Marine is wearing. It has a bipod, and again, outside of Space Marine Scouts, I don't think we see much of that. I know my Elysian drop troops have them on their special weapons, but that's not the point. Maybe Marines don't need them with their super strength. It looks awesome regardless. So here's another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference for you. Have you seen the new Leagues of Votan miniatures? Specifically, the wagon things. I completely forget the name of those. Moon buggies. Well, someone either painted or mocked up some painted vehicles of theirs in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle themed colours. Just like their party wagon bus van thing that they used to drive around in. It was yellow with a green shelly type top. Anyway, their version looked absolutely fantastic. I always really wanted that turtle's party wagon as a kid. And the blimp. It was bloody massive. I saw it in, hanging in my uh, toy shop once. And it was really big. That just brought back some wonderful memories. I never got the bloody thing though. Oh, and by the way, did you know, you Americans might not know this, that you had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles over there in the US and probably the rest of the world, but over here, Ninja was considered far too violent. So we had it changed to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Because that's considerably less violent than Ninja, especially when the main character is running around with a sword. Oh, also Michelangelo's nunchucks got edited out of every episode, if I remember correctly, because they were also considered too violent. Unlike Raphael's sigh, which could stab you in the face. They were strange times. I think we're allowed the full-on violence now. He's got his nunchucks back and they're back to being called ninjas. It's another titan. I bet you're glad you stuck around for more, right? So yet again, the artist escapes me. So yet again, if you know who it is, then please let us know in the comments below. Now, this Titan is a little harder to identify. It's either a Warlord or a War Master. I think it's the squarer variant of the Warlord, but let me know if I'm wrong. Now, we have a missile launching fist, which is an amusing weapon. However, I'm not sure what the one on the Titan's left arm is. Is it some sort of melter cannon? It looks very good, and I like it a lot. Especially the cool little banner hanging underneath it. Again, we might have a weird variant. The Warlord we all know and love has two weapons mounted on the top of the carapace, and this one has none. So maybe it's not a Warlord after all. I'm getting more confused the more I look at it. On the front of the Titan is an intriguing type of armour plating. I think they call this lobster armour or something due to the way the plates overlap. Also at the bottom of it hangs a miniature version of the Titan's head, which is odd. I think my favourite part of the whole piece though are those knee weapons. Such an interesting but inspired place to mount them. It's great. If you want to see some more Warhammer 40,000 themed art videos, and I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels.